has positive charge on here, say, and I bring it close to the Van de Graaff, there will be an electric field between this charged object and the Van de Graaff, and the closer I get, the stronger that electric field will be. And when I touch the outer shell, then the charge will flow on the Van de Graaff. I go back to my power supply, I touch again the few thousand volts, and I keep spooning charge on the Van de Graaff. Will I be able to get the Van de Graaff up to 300,000 volts? No way, because there comes a time that the potential of this object, which comes from my power supply, is the same electric potential as the Van de Graaff. And then you can no longer exchange charge. What it comes down to is that when you come with this conductor and you approach the Van de Graaff, there will be no longer any electric fields between the two. So there will be no longer any potential difference. So you can't transfer any more charge. So you run very quickly into a situation which will freeze. You cannot get it above a few thousand volts. So now what you do, and here comes the breakthrough by Professor Van de Graaff from MIT, who now said, ah, I don't have to bring the charge on this way, but I can bring the charge in this way. So now you go to your power supply, a few thousand volts, and you bring it inside this sphere where there was no electric field to start with. When you charge the outside, there's going to be an electric field from this object, and there's going to be an electric field from this object, and that result will be zero in between. There was no electric field inside. If I now bring the positive, the charged sphere there, I'm going to get E field lines like this, problem 2, 1. And so now there is a potential difference between this object and the sphere. What I have done, by moving it from here to the inside, I have done positive work without having realized it, and therefore I have brought this potential higher than the sphere. Now I touch the inside of the Van de Graaff, and now the charge will run on the outer shell. And I can keep doing that. Inside, touch. Inside, touch. Inside, touch. And every time I come in here, there is no electric field in there. So I can do that until I'm green in the face. Well, there comes a time that I can no longer increase the potential of the Van de Graaff, and that is when the Van de Graaff goes into electric breakdown. When I reach my 300,000 volt, it's all over. I can try to bring the potential up, but it's going to lose charge to the air. And so that is the ultimately the limit of the potential of the Van de Graaff. So how does the Van de Graaff work? Uh, we have a, a belt, which is run by a motor. Here is the the Van de Graaff, and right here, through corona discharge, we put charge on the belt. There are very sharp points, and we get a corona discharge at a relatively low potential difference, goes on the belt, the belt goes here, and right here, there are two sharp points, which through corona discharge take the charge off on the inside, that's the key, and then it goes to the dome, and then it charges up, up to the point, that you begin to hear the sparks and that you have breakdown. And I can demonstrate that to you. I built my own Van de Graaff, and the Van de Graaff that I built to you is this paint can. I'm going to charge that paint can by touching it repeatedly with a conductor, and the conductor has a, going to be, yeah, I'm going to touch the conductor with a few thousand volt power supply every time, this is the power supply, turning it on now, and you're going to see the potential of the Van de Graaff there. Um, that is a very crude measure for the potential on the Van de Graaff, but very crudely when it reads a 1, I have about 10,000 volts. This is the probe that I'm using for that. A 2 reads 20,000 volts. My power supply is only a few thousand volts. So that's not very good. Well, I will first start charging it on the outside to demonstrate to you that I very quickly run into the wall that I just described. That if they have the same potential, then I can no longer transfer a charge. But then I'm going to change my tactics and then I go inside. And then you will see that it will go up further. So let's first see what happens if I now bring charge on the outside. 
There it goes. It's about 1,000 volts, about 2,000 volts. 2,000 volts, keep an eye on it. 2,000 volts, it's heading for 3,000 volts. 3,000 volts, 3,000 volts, 3,000 volts, 3,000 volts. It's not getting anywhere. I'm beginning to reach the saturation, maybe 3,500 volts. 3,500, it's slowly going to 4. Let's see whether we can get it much higher than 4. I don't think we can. So this is the end of the story before Professor Van der Graaff. But then came Professor Van der Graaff. And he said, look, man, you've got to go inside. Now watch it. Now I have to concentrate on this scooping. So I would like you to tell me when we reach 5,000, you just scream. Oh, man, we're already past the 5,000, you dummies. 10,000. Scream when you see 10,000. Scream when you see 15,000. Scream when you see 15,000. Very good. Keep an eye on it. Tell me when you see 20,000. I don't hear anything. Now I want you to tell me every 1,000, because I think we're going to run into the wall very quickly. 21? I want to hear 22. Oh, you're ready at 23. So I expect that very, very quickly now, the can will go into discharge. You won't see that, but you get corona discharge. And then no matter how hard I work, I will not be able to bring the potential up. But let's keep going. Are we already at 2,500? 25,000, sorry, 25,000. 25,000 volts, 25,6, 27, 27, 28, 28, looks like we are beginning to get into the corona discharge, 28, boy, 28, that's a record, 28, keep an eye on it, 29, 29. You realize I'm doing all this work. Well, I got paid for it. I, I think I've reached the limit. I've reached the, my own limit and I've reached the limit of the charging. Now we have 30,000 volts and we started off with only a few thousand volts. Originally, it wasn't a very dangerous object, but now, 30,000 volts? Shall I? Okay, see you next week. <laughs>